Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gevrik again. We are learning labor economics and today we are going to talk about labor demand chapter. And today we are going to focus on in part 7 two special uh, types of isoquants. I want to just like show you a couple of things, right? Isoquants shows you capital and labor combination that produce the same level of output so all these different combinations a b c blah 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 they all produce the same quantity let's say i'm getting hungry so 200 cookies <laughs> but with different combinations of labor and capital okay so let's talk about two special isoquants that don't look like these convex to the origin isoquants okay so we're going to talk about perfect substitutes in production and perfect complements in production uh, we're talking about uh, inputs or factors of production capital and labor in this case being perfect substitutes complements let's see so if you look at the left hand side capital labor employment okay this is an isoquant right normally isoquants look like they look like this labor capital but this is a straight line, okay, downward sloping. So this is an example of, left panel is an example of capital and labor being perfect substitutes. That means in this case, you can substitute two workers in place of one capital, okay? So that's very interesting. The isoquant is linear so that two workers can always be substituted for one machine. So how did I find that? The slope. Right, marginal product of labor to, right, marginal product of labor, okay, marginal product of labor, negative marginal product of labor divided by marginal product of capital, and that is going to be negative delta K, delta L, rise over run, 100, I'm just doing the easy one, divided by 200 units, right, negative 1 over 2. Okay, so I can substitute two capital units of capital for, so two units of labor for one unit of capital, two to one rate. All right, so let's take a look at this isoquant on the right hand side. It's literally like L-shaped, okay? This is like something I really like, uh, this shape. This also applies to the indifference curves. It's all about like left shoe, right shoe. These are perfect complements. Complements are two things that go together. Perfect complements are those things that need to need to be used together at certain proportion. Left shoe, right shoe, right? I have two, I have two shoes, one pair. Left shoe, right shoe, the same shoe. It's only useful if I have one of each. It's similar to that. Here in this case, for instance, you can produce this level of output. Q0 level of output, if you only put 20 units of labor and 5 units of capital, if you put 30 units of labor and 5 units of capital, you still produce only this Q0 level. Why? Because they are only useful to be used in 5 to 20 proportion. It's really interesting. So right panel says that the two inputs are perfect complements. So if the isoquant is right angled, so it's like L-shaped, the firm then gets the same output when it hires 5 machines and 20 workers or when it hires 5 machines, 25 workers or 30 workers or 100 workers. So it's like me drinking my coffee. I put exactly one pack of sugar. If I put two packs of sugar, the proportion is destroyed. So I'm not enjoying it, right? Okay. So that's it. We're going to talk about elasticity of labor demand in part eight. I'll see you in part eight.